So everyone's wondering, when is the housing market gonna crash? And I keep seeing video after video, instilling fear and hysteria about the housing market, and these talking heads predicting chaos and ruin. Well, in this video, we are going to look at the data and see what's going on in today's housing market, and also look at the past housing market crashes and see if the current market conditions look anything like the previous ones. Stick around. Hello family, welcome back. And if you're new here, thank you for joining us. I am Sir Ashley, and on this channel we talk about money and real estate. We are about to jump into the topic of the video, but before we do, be sure to smash on that like button. I greatly appreciate it, and it helps the channel. And I wanna know your thoughts on this current topic. Tell me in the comment sections if you think the housing market will crash, and why. Let's jump into it. According to a report from marketwatch.com, Searches for the phrase, when is the housing market gonna crash, are up 2,450% over the past month. Wow. And the housing market has the average person wondering, is it too hot? Is it bound to crash? So let's talk about it. Many people are weary of the price increases. In fact, the National Association of Realtors said that the median existing single family home sale prices jumped to over $334,000. That's an 18.4% increase from this time last year. And a three to 5% annual increase is considered a healthy market. So yes, it is wise to be concerned about the market and to be paying attention to things. But if you watch this channel, you know we like to dig a little deeper into things and you know that we like to take things in its historical context. So we're going to look at the other times here in America that the housing market has crashed. And if the circumstances surrounding today's housing market is anything like those housing markets and the crashes that followed. But let's first determine a baseline for what would be the definition of a housing market crash. People like to use hyperbolic rhetoric like crash and collapse. But for this video, let's use numbers. Numbers are more concrete so for the purpose of this video, let's define a housing market crash as the loss of 20% of the home's value in a 12 month time frame. Why 20%? Well, because traditionally that's the amount of money a home buyer had to put down in order to get a conventional loan. And if you have an FHA loan, once you have 20% equity, you can refinance and get rid of your PMI or private mortgage insurance. So that's the definition we are going to go with. A housing market crash is the loss of 20% of a home's value in a 12 month time frame. So historically, we in the United States have only had three housing crashes and only three things that have caused those housing crashes. So let's look at those three things that caused the housing crash and if based on historical precedents, we can expect the housing crash to come in our near future. Let's talk about the biggest housing crash in US history and it was actually the first housing crash in the United States. And it occurred during the Great Depression. In 1929, home prices fell almost 67%. In fact, in 1932, 273,000 people lost their homes. And during the next year, a thousand mortgages a day were being foreclosed upon. And by 1933, 40 to 50% of all home mortgages in the United States were in default. Talk about crazy times. But what isn't talked about or mentioned when people talk about the housing crash during the Great Depression was that at that time, mortgages were very short. Most often mortgage terms were three to seven years with just interest only payments, but had a big balloon payment at the end of the term. So when the Great Depression came, many people could make their monthly payment, but when that bill became due, when the term ended and that balloon payment was due, many people could not make that payment and they ended up defaulting and ended up losing their home due to foreclosure. But in 1934, under President FDR, the National Housing Act of 1934 created the FHA, the Federal Housing Authority, and the actions taken under FDR's administration stopped the avalanche of homeowner defaults and it stopped that wave of default and foreclosures by refinancing those 
interest only short term loans, the United States government made an active effort into refinancing those mortgages into what we see today as a 15 to 30 year term with low interest rates. So no longer were there those short term loans with balloon payments at the end. Also, the creation of the FHA allowed for a mortgage to be insured by the federal government. So when you peel back the layers, the root cause of the first and most severe housing crash in our history was the existence and implementation of short term interest only mortgages with balloon payments at the very end. Now let's compare that to today's housing market. We don't have those same challenges. Today we have long mortgage terms with historically low interest rates. So the cause of the housing crash that happened during the Great Depression does not apply to today's circumstances. Now let's move on and talk about the housing crash that many people overlook and it's not really given much attention. And I'm referring to the housing crash of the early 80s. Now let's remember the conditions around that time. During that time, inflation was high, but also unemployment was very, very high. The result of both of those dynamics, high interest rates and high unemployment caused housing affordability to drop to an all time low as mortgage interest rates soared to all time highs. The record high mortgage rates of those times, which was around 17 to 18%, simply priced most of Americans out of the housing market and depressed home sales for years to come. From a study done in 2012 by the St. Louis Federal Reserve, they looked at the US tax policies and the tax policies implications on house prices and rents. And they concluded that the tax policies of the early 80s before Reagan could change them caused people not to want to own investment properties. And when those people no longer wanted to own investment properties, there was a flood of inventory. But due to the high interest rates, no one could afford to buy those properties. And that led to a crash. So let's take a step back and see if what happened in the 80s applies to today's housing market. In the late 70s and early 80s, you had high inflation, anywhere from 13 to 18%, coupled with high unemployment and constricting tax policies, which made real estate investing less desirable. And when you compare that to today, we can see that today's housing market conditions aren't quite the same. Presently, we have record low interest rates, but we do have high unemployment. Now, I do want you to remember this point. During the housing crash of the early 80s, housing affordability was an issue. Now, it was an issue because there was high unemployment and very high interest rates. Today, we don't see the high interest rates, but there is high unemployment. So let's talk about housing affordability right now. According to the National Association of Home Builders, they did a recent study and 58% of the registered voters that voted in the 2020 election said that they believe that there is, there is a major housing affordability problem right here in the United States. And in March of 2021, the median home price in America was $370,000. And that's up over 15% from the past year. The United States housing affordability issue is impacting different parts of the country disproportionately. Here where I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, the median home price in March, 2021 was $293,000 according to the local realtor association. And while $293,000 median home price in Charlotte is significantly less than the national average, it does represent an over 12% increase in the past year. Now we're going to come back to the issue of housing affordability, but let's look at the housing crash of 2008, also known as the great recession. During the years leading up to the crash in 2008, the federal reserve loosened their supervision and regulations on banks and lenders, which allowed those same banks to abandon loan standards. Lenders at the time were giving people loans who had no business receiving them. There wasn't any income verifications, no employment verifications. And on top of that, lenders were offering people adjustable rate mortgages and the public jumped on them because they saw these low introductory rates. Well, when all these introductory rates ended, thousands upon thousands of people couldn't afford to make their mortgage payments and they went into default. Also, the banks made a fatal error. They disregarded the simple principle of supply and demand. And the banks went ahead and foreclosed on thousands and thousands of homes while also overcorrecting regarding their lending guidelines. And they would not lend money to people who could actually afford mortgages. And we 
Here in the United States, found ourselves with a huge supply of homes and not enough demand. So like anything in commerce, when there's huge supply and not enough demand, prices plummeted and the housing crash occurred. So let's compare the causes of the Great Recession to the housing market today. During the Great Recession, banks were giving out subprime loans. Also, a substantial amount of mortgages that they wrote were adjustable rate mortgages. And they gave loans to unqualified people. Yet, in today's market, bank lending has never been stricter. Banks' requirements for getting a loan have been getting tougher and tougher, not more relaxed during this pandemic. So, the factors that caused the housing crash during the Great Recession is not prevalent in today's housing market. All right, we just looked at all the times there was a housing crash in the United States and how it has been different than the present circumstances we are experiencing. Now, let's examine to why today's housing market has skyrocketed to heights we've never seen before. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The main reason we are in this position is because there is a lack of inventory. The lack of inventory is due to years upon years of lack of production by home builders. Yes, the lack of new homes is the main reason why there's a lack of inventory, but what has compounded that is that people have been hesitant to put their homes on the market due to health concerns and having people walk through their property without knowing how serious of a risk it may cause them. But even though there has been a lack of supply of homes in the market, the demand for buying a new home hasn't ever been higher. 2020 has shown people that they need their own space and they need more of it. Also, interest rates have been at or near historic lows for the past 14 to 15 months. Money has never been cheaper. And in the early 80s, interest rates on a mortgage was at least 13%, all the way up to 18%. Today, interest rates are hovering around 3% and even got as low as 2.65% in January of 2021. So the demand for more space and people wanting to take advantage of these historically low interest rates has been huge factors for causing a housing demand. But the main factor for such housing demand has been millennials. For years, millennials have been getting a bad rap from the older generations. Older generations have been calling millennials lazy, entitled, and a soft generation who will forever rent with their parents. The older generations never thought millennials would own a home because they spent too much money on coffee and avocado toast. And as a millennial, I've heard it all. But in the past year, millennials have been flexing their financial muscle. Millennials are the ones driving the demand for homes. They are buying homes at a faster rate than any other age group. And millennials, we're not just buying modest starter homes. Millennials are buying expensive, well above average priced homes. The reason pricing is at an all time high and it feels like a bubble is due to the limited supply of homes, yet the huge demand. So will we see another housing crash? Only time will tell. But earlier in this video, we touched on the three things that have caused housing markets to crash in the past. The first thing is short term interest loans with balloon payments at the end like what happened during the Great Depression. The second thing that caused housing markets to crash is that the US government took actions in the form of tax policy, which made owning a home less attractive and less desirable. The third cause for a housing market to crash was the unscrupulous actions of banks and lenders, which allow people to get loans who were not qualified to get them. So after looking at history, I believe the following will happen. Now, I am not a fortune teller, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do like to look at the past so we can see if those factors are in place and how we can plan or prepare moving forward. The first thing I think will happen is that inventory will slowly increase, but it will still be a seller's market. Number two, home values will continue to increase, but at a slower pace. Home prices increased over 15% last year, but with the increased inventory I think we're going to have, I see home values increasing somewhere around 8 to 10%. Now, what I do not see is that millions of homeowners who have taken mortgage forbearance severely impacting the housing market due to foreclosure because the government has enacted policies that will allow these homeowners to land softly on their feet if they avail themselves to it. Now, what does concern me about the housing market is government intervention. 
I'm not saying government intervention will be good or bad, but one thing we don't know is how the market would react to such an intervention. If we look back to the housing crash in the early 80s, the government intervened by changing the tax policies that made real estate less attractive to own as an investment. Now I told you we are going to come back to the issue of housing affordability. Now while I agree that it is troubling that the average working American may not be able to afford a median priced home here in America, I do believe that if the government intervenes, that could have an adverse effect on the housing market and instead of bringing about a leveling out of the market, it may bring about a housing crash. So if you're like the thousands upon thousands of Americans wondering if a housing crash is to come, I don't see it happening anytime soon unless there is government intervention, which makes owning real estate less desirable. Now, be sure to let me know your thoughts on the housing market and if you think a crash is imminent or when you think a crash may occur. I'm Sir Ashley. Talk soon. Talk to me.